Watch you guys, got another PC build video here for you. This is the parts we're going to use. This is the Bitphoenix Dawn TG uh, case. This is a brand new case on the market. Looks pretty nice. We'll be taking a closer look at this in more detail during the build. And also we'll do a separate video on this particular case. We've also got the B450 Aorus Pro motherboard, the Ryzen 5 3600. So we've got the GeForce GTX uh, 1660 Super by Zotac. Got a one terabyte Samsung drive, and we've also got some other bits and pieces like a 500 watt power supply. So we've got the motherboard out the box. I'm going to pull the retention lever back for the socket so we can insert our CPU. Now this is a pretty straightforward process, not that difficult to do. You can see we've got the CPU here. Just make sure you've got that little triangle on the corner of the CPU uh, lined up with the triangle on the motherboard. It should be on the corner here, and it will only go in one way and don't force it, it should just drop straight into the slot here. So when you marry that up, just drop it in and it should drop straight into the socket. If it doesn't go in, you've got it round the wrong way. Now it's in the socket, you can see I just give it a little small wiggle, it's not moving anywhere and we can pull that retention lever down. If there's any sort of resistance, you've got it in the wrong way, but you can only put it in one way so it's pretty straightforward. I'll clean that uh, CPU up a little bit later on in the video. So let's move on to the next step, which is putting your RAM in. Very simple process. Just get the RAM out of the packaging here. And you're looking for that little notch on the motherboard and also on the RAM here. And they just have to be lined up so it slots into position. It'll only go in one way. So I've got those little levers pulled back on the memory slots here. Just have to get the notch lined up to the notch on the board here and slot it in the groove and just push down firmly until you hear a click, that simple. Nothing too difficult there, it'll only go in one way so just push down on the ends like so and you should hear a click. And all you need to do is just repeat that process if you've got more than one stick. Uh, the dim slots there are numbered, dim slot 1, dim slot 2, dim slot 3 and also dim slot 4. If you've got 4 slots you may have 2 slots on there or you may have 8 slots depending on what type of board you've got but use the right correct dim slots. In this case, it's one and three. So we've just got a nice firm surface here. Just push down on the ends. If it doesn't go in, you've got it around the wrong way. Push down, you should hear clicks and uh, that should be it, pretty much done. So we're gonna go on to the drive here now. So we're gonna put in our Samsung 970 Evo drive. And this will go into this little M.2 slot here down the bottom. So I'm just gonna remove this one here and uh, you can see this has got a thermal pad on it. We just need to remove that protective covering and then we can move on to slotting in our drive. So we're gonna put in the drive. This will slot into the board and it goes in one way. Just make sure that's inserted in and then we've got that little post there. We can screw down the screw to lock it into position. But first we need to remove this little plastic thing here. This is the little thermal pad to keep the drive nice and cool and then we just have to slot that into position there very simple and easy to do this has two slots on the board here we're just using the lower one here and then we can screw that down very simple stuff so this was the Samsung 970 Evo one terabyte drive I had this available to me so I'm just going to be using this for the Windows operating system and of course, because it's one terabyte and it's an NVMe drive, it should be really fast. And uh, there should be enough storage on there for a little while until someone either puts in, you know, mechanical drive for all their games and stuff. So now we're going to put a cooler on here and we need to remove the bracket, which comes with a motherboard. So it's four screws we just need to remove here for the bracket. And there is a back plate on here. Now once you've removed these you want to keep these brackets safe just in case you want to sell the motherboard or send it back if it's uh, got a problem with it. So keep these in the motherboard box with the screws. You never know when you might need them. Now we're going to be leaving the back plate on here because we need to screw into that with our stock cooler. It's just the stock cooler doesn't use these particular mounting brackets here. So we can move those to one side. So you can see the back plate is still there. And if I lift the board up now, it will fall out. So we're not going to be doing that. We'll leave it lying flat down and we'll just put in the stock cooler. But I'm just before I do that, let me just clean this compound off with a isopropanol wipe here or alcohol wipe. And that's all cleaned up. 
and now we're going to put the cooler on there. And this already has compound on it, so I don't need to worry about uh, applying thermal grease. Already has that on there, so I'm just going to screw this down and put this into position. So let's get that into position here and tighten these screws down. Now you don't want to go all the way down on one of the first screws, you just want to get it started and just go with a crisscross pattern here until you get it locked into position. And again, once that's done, we can go all the way around, like so. And you should hear it sort of clicking into position here. There we go. Just one more. Now you'll see the AMD bracket uh, logo is round the wrong way here. It's, it's just the normal way that they do it on this. I don't know why, but it just means we're just going to have to remove those screws and rotate that round just in case someone wants to add in another two sticks of memory it will stick out onto the memory slot so I'm just going to remove that and rotate it to the up position and there's just four little screws here and this will remove the fan and the plastic shrouds from the uh, actual heatsink itself so we can uh, reposition it and you can rotate this in any position you want once you've removed these four screws so I'll just go ahead and remove these from the cooler itself now in theory I could leave that where it is right now because it's not causing any problems because we've only got two sticks of memory but again at a later date someone who buys this PC may need to uh, have more memory in the in the PC and of course they won't be able to put it in that fourth slot because that little logo is hanging over the slot so let's go ahead and position this round the right way here and of course what we all need to do now is reverse the process and put those little screws back in and that's that it's pretty straightforward stuff nothing too difficult here so far once we've got this in position we're pretty much ready to start thinking about putting this into the case and uh, as you can see it doesn't take that long at all and if I didn't have the tripod in front of me and I was going at full speed here you could do this very very quickly indeed so we screwed those four screws down and all we need to do now is plug in the cable here to the CPU fan header on the board here so it should give you two options here there's two options for CPU fan and also CPU optional and uh, you just want to put it into the CPU fan and just uh, put that in there let me go in one way and that will be slotted in there and once that's done I will put a cable tie around that cable a little bit later on just looks a bit unsightly and uh, we can now put this into the case so that is the process of getting the motherboard prepped so what we need to do now is put a three more standoffs onto the case here because these require nine standoffs uh, to be put into the case to mount the motherboard correctly so there's three missing so I'm just gonna put these in and this screw tray comes in handy because it's magnetic and also it all the screws come with the case when you buy it now this is quite a nice case uh, I do like the look of this case I'll do a review of this because I think it's worthy of a review so look out for that one I'm just going to get a little ratchet set here and tighten these standoffs down and uh, once we've got those down we can then put in the motherboard now these are just to bring the motherboard off of the case itself so it doesn't ground out and then we screw into those that's pretty self-explanatory really so let's just go ahead and do that now we don't have to put in the IO shield here because the motherboard has the IO shield already uh, molded to the motherboard here so I'm just going to hold the CPU call here and drop this into position and slot it into where it should go and there we go and once we've got that into position we just need to line it up with the standoffs here to make sure we're in the right place and get them cables out the way make sure the IO shield is sitting right into this little socket there so we've got it nice and level and I'm just trying to line that little screw up there so we can screw into it so next up we need to screw down the motherboard with the screws that come with the case so I'm just going to tighten these down just make sure the standoffs are in the right position for the screw holes otherwise you could short the board out with those standoffs if they're not in the right position so just check that before you screw them down 
and uh, we're pretty much good to go. I'm just going to show you a couple of screws here and we'll move on to the next stage. Again this is a pretty straightforward process here. We'll get onto some fans in a second once we've done this process and we'll start getting some fans installed into the case. Now if you don't want RGB fans you can go with just standard stock fans. If you don't like RGB at all that's fine. But, but RGB is pretty big nowadays. Everyone's loving RGB but not everyone likes it and if you don't like it you can still build PCs without RGB. So this top area here is where you can put a radiator if you wanted to. But we're just going to put a couple of fans up here just to fill this area. The good thing about this case is it does come with some covers here which allow you to put on uh, a full cover here to hide this mesh or you can put in some mesh filter in here as well which comes with the case itself. You'll see that in the case review. So I'm just going to put a couple of uh, fans up here just to fill this area out to help uh, keep it nice and cool. And of course I've got these fans to hand which was sent out by BitPhoenix so I wanted to get use of these and put them in. Now just make sure you've got these fans rotated the correct way. This one's around the wrong way so let me just quickly rotate this around the right way which means it's going to be blowing air out. So heat rises it will suck air in and it will blow it out the top and that's basically what you want to use that for. So I'm going to be putting in some screws here. I'm just going to use the electric screwdriver here just to make this a lot easier and screw these down. There we go. And again, you can use a hand screwdriver here, but I'm still having some issues with a trap nerve in my hand. So I'm just going to use this every now and again just to ease off the pressure on my hand. But other than that, we're pretty much done here with the fans. It already comes with two fans in the front this case and one at the rear. So all we're doing is adding in two more um, addressable RGB fans up the top. So we'll just get these uh, tightened down here and that should be good to go. And again I can see that um, this is starting to come together really nicely now. And you can see it's not that difficult to put a PC together. Picking the parts and doing all the cable management is probably the most trickiest part. So next up we're going to move on to the power supply and again we can choose which direction we want to place the power supply. We want the fan facing up or facing down. It's entirely up to you uh, whether you want it facing up or down. Uh, there's not much big difference here, but if it's an RGB power supply, then you might want it facing up to get that nice RGB fan showing through uh, the top part there. They have got some mesh on here, and this is where you can put, I think, uh, some fans on here if you wish, but I'm not gonna be doing that. So this is the one we've got here. It's a smart series from Thermaltake, uh, ultra quiet RGB uh, 500 watt power supply here. It's a white label. Uh, type of power supply so it's not the best in the world but it will do what we're going to be using here so you can face it up or down like so entirely up to you which way you want to go about doing it this does have RGB on here so you might want to face this upwards if you want to see that um, illuminate through the top of the case there as long as you hasn't got a, a basement where it's got no cover here where you won't be able to see it uh, if it is then you want to face it downwards like so there is a filter on the bottom so either way it's entirely up to you it will show through the bottom there so it's, it's up to you which way you want to rotate this. Now again this may look a little bit daunting with all these cables uh, flopping around here. Uh, this is a non-modular power supply which means you do get a lot of cables and it does look a bit daunting but it's not that difficult to do. So all we need to do here is put four screws in to put this into location and lock it there so it's pretty straightforward stuff. You can either use a hand screwdriver or electric screwdriver it's entirely up to you here just going to line these up. Once I've got them lined up, I'm going to screw this in. That's a bit fiddly for me because I've got the tripod right in front of me here, so it's not that easy. You can see I'm sort of at an angle here, which makes it a little bit more difficult, but it is very easy to install one of these. And once we've got this into position, we can then start to think about the cable management and uh, get these cables uh, sorted out, ready for uh, the installation of all the other bits and pieces so we'll do that in a minute let's just get these screws in to the power supply first and we can move on to the next stage so we'll just do this last screw here and then we can uh, start tidying some of these cables up now we've got a lot of uh, cables to sort out a lot of fans with addressable rgb so we need to get those all sorted out i will probably daisy chain these all together 
and go into a hub and then put the RGB addressable RGB cable to the motherboard now you will need to make sure that you've got ample power for these fans so you need probably a fan hub or something like that to give it enough power you can see there is a fan hub up there just line these up and put these in so I'm going to daisy chain all of these now these are 5 volt uh, type RGB ones instead of the 4 pins which are 12 volt and you may find that if you put a load of these to the motherboard you may run into problems uh, without the appropriate power so let's get the cables plugged in this is the audio cable I've tucked them in through the bottom here so I'm just going to put these into the motherboard I'm just using a torch here because it gets pretty dark in there and it's very difficult to see uh, which way they go round but that's that one done we've also got some of the other cables to put in which are the 3.0 cable which goes into the board here and also we've got the power switch and all those other cables to put in as well so I'm just going to bend this back over and get this into here and this connection is in a real tight spot uh, for this particular cable now sometimes they're on the side up near the 24 pin which is quite easy to insert but here it's making it very difficult because of the cable that has to be bent over so this is not the easiest one to put in here and get it straight I'll just give that a little push and a wiggle and it should get into position here again that could be a, a lot more easier there we go you can see that how, how bent over that cable is so all we need to do now is the front case cables here for the USB and also for the power switch, the hard drive, LEDs and stuff like that. So I'll just go ahead and get these all plugged in. They come with their own connector on this motherboard and I'll push the connector in so you don't have to worry about this. Now this sometimes seems a bit daunting to some people. It's not that difficult. There's plenty of diagrams on the internet which you can follow. You've also got your user manual which you can follow. You just plug them in to the designated parts on the motherboard which is very easy it will say power switch power uh, plus and minus and it will tell you exactly which way to plug them in so you can see I've got them into this little adapter here and you just push the adapter into uh, the motherboard so the build's coming along quite nicely now uh, we're pretty much near the end of it so just need to do a bit of cable management and also uh, get some cables into the 24 pin the CPU and also we just need to do a bit more tidying up and put that graphics card in as well so that's about as good as we're going to get those cables there so we've got the CPU cable to go in up the top here and we also got the 24 pin as well to put in so we're going to be using some RGB ones here which were sent over by uh, Leon Lee so a big thank you to Leon Lee for contributing to the build by sending some bits over. Also Bit Phoenix sent some parts over as well, which it really does help out with me making these builds possible. You can see there's plenty of room up the top here to get to this. So I've got a 24 pin from Leon Lee here, which uh, shows all RGB. We've got the color braided cables on the bottom. You won't see those. All you're going to see is some RGB lighting, which uh, you can change the color scheme to this, which is pretty nice as well. That's quite a thick cable and quite uh, rigid, so you're going to have to plan this out properly to make sure it works right. So it should be okay, but you can see those plastic sleeves over the top which will light up here. And it's quite stiff. So this connector will go to a hub which they also supply, and it's a little tiny hub here that lets you change the colour scheme. So you can have a rainbow effect or blue, white, green, all these sort of colours. These are the other cables that will go to the hub as well. They come in a kit, so you can use those as well that come with this bit of unit. Now, this is a new product on the market, so if you're into RGB, then this might be something you would enjoy installing here. So that's what we're going to try and attempt in this build here. Now, of course, if you don't like RGB, then this is not for you. Maybe just stick with some braided color cables if you want to do that. So this is your controller box here and you can see it's just got some set presets here and speed and stuff like that so let's get this installed so it's quite rigid and this part needs to go through uh, the rubber grommet here so we can connect onto it because it's an extension basically to the other power supply so 
we'll connect that round the back a little bit later on so I'm just poking these cables through and then we can then get this into the 24 pin here there we go so I'm just going to get this round you can see there's the cables on the bottom there and I'm curious to see what this will actually look like when it's all fully done so if you're after that RGB effect these might be worth taking a look at they're not cheap but again if you're after that RGB effect then something like this will definitely be a choice for you so we've got that into position and this is um here Leon Lee it's called the Strimmer Plus and uh, this is the 24 pin we've also got the extension for the graphics card here which they sent over as well and Leon Lee have been around for a long time they make some awesome cases so if you're looking for some decent cases as well check out their website so this is the graphics card um, power cable again this is an extension you can see there's two 8 pin cables on here unfortunately I only need um, an 8 pin not a 16 pin so I sort of modded it a little bit so I'm just going to move out this little expansion slot here by removing the screw and there's two of these we need to remove and then we can put the graphics card in now if you're looking for a cheap graphics card and get into PC gaming then the 1650 and the 1660 Super are pretty nice cards uh, for people that want to get into PC gaming that don't want to spend vast amounts of money also you've got the 2060 Super as well which is a pretty decent card but this 1660 Super is pretty decent from uh, Zotac and it's the amp version and you can pick these up pretty cheap too and it's got the back plate on it it looks quite nice and that's what we're going to be using in this build so I'm just going to slot this one in and you can see it does only have an 8 pin power connector on it so we'll have to mod that other cable to get that to work with this particular type of graphics card which I'm sure you can so we'll take a look at that in a second so I'm going to put the screws in to hold the graphics card into position here it's just two I'm doing this left-handed and I'm actually right-handed but the tripods in the way okay so we've got that into position there let's get one more screw in here and you don't want to be using an electric screwdriver on on something like this because you could strip these you don't want to be doing that so just try and use a hand one for, for things like this especially for the CPU cooler and things like that try and use a hand screwdriver or radiators okay so here we have our cable and you can see the dilemma we've got here we've got two cables here when we only really need one so what I need to do is take a look at whether I can cannibalize this and knock it down to just an 8 pin connector and there is a little plastic comb on here which I've sort of managed to prise open and this will allow me to get access to the cables here which means I can then pull one of those cables out so I've managed to pull that off and I'm just gonna separate this other plastic comb you can see it's coming away nicely so I just need to mess around here now we'll still have all of the RGB effect but we'll just only be using an 8 pin connector here so I need to remove this plastic comb down the bottom and I've managed to remove that cable now so what I need to do now is centralize this one and put it in the center uh, it will look a little bit peculiar but you probably won't notice it so I've managed to do that now and this is the finished result I've managed to make this into a single 8 pin connector and we're still going to have all of the RGB goodness but just using an 8 pin connector so it's the best as I can do to utilize something like this with this sort of graphics card now of course if you do have a, a 16 pin power connector then obviously you've got that option available to you so I'm just going to plug this in and we're going to route this down to the bottom now unfortunately this was not an easy process with this particular type of case because I've utilized that little uh, grommet hole there with the uh, 3.0 cable and a bunch of other ones which made it very very tight indeed so the alignment here was not the best so I had to use a slight angle here to get off to the next one to the side um, which I didn't want to do but it was the best I could do so we'll get that all into position and tidy that back cabling up now this case has got awesome cable management here got this big panel in here which allows you to hide all the cables you can see this looks absolutely awesome got that control 
panel there and also this is on non-modular power supply which makes it a little bit more difficult to cable manage but you can see it turned out pretty well uh, with this particular type of case and I think this opens up doors for you to be able to use non-modular power supplies uh, with these particular cases because you can hide the cables a lot easier. So this is the end result. We've got everything into position here. You can see that RGB cable on the graphics card slightly to the left. Not a lot I could do here. Uh, that's the only position I could get that into uh, working uh, to make it work properly, but it's okay. And this is what it looks like with the glass panel off. I think it turned out pretty nice. Again, those do look a bit orangey, but they are red on uh, real life. It's just the cameras reflecting them as orange. And again, if you don't like RGB, then uh, you don't have to buy RGB parts. You can just use extension cables without RGB on them. But if you're an RGB type person, then something like this might be something you're interested in. So don't judge the PC build on RGB alone. You can always make this non-RGB if you wish, and you'll probably save a little bit of money. This is with the smoked side glass panel on. And you can see the results look pretty nice does look pretty good those cables turned out pretty good you can see how bright those cables are when you get close up and they do show up red again this might not be for everyone and you can see the rgb on the power supply i did flip it around the other way just to get that nice result but all in all i think it turned out pretty well a couple of loose cables need a bit tidying up there but other than that it looks okay again it looks all red and you've got that front uh, RGB on the case as well. That might be a little bit too much for some people. Now the RGB does allow you to turn them off, but there's not much point buying a case that supports RGB if you're not gonna use it. Uh, you might as well just buy another type of case. Anyway, that's it. I'll leave all the links for the parts I used in this build in the video description. That is the end result here. Uh, if you want to see some benchmarks let me know i'm not going to be doing any benchmarks in this video but that is the build process very simple and easy to do my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope you enjoyed this one if you did then show your appreciation and hit that thumbs up button and i shall see you again for another video tomorrow bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos